Hi there, my name is Alan Lamont. This video is called The Lukewarm Church in Bed with the Great Whore. And I'm going to begin from Revelation chapter 3 and then I'm going to share what's taking place in the body of Christ at this present time. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 14. And to the angel of the church of the Lucidians write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. So then, because ye were lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. Because ye say, I am rich, and have increased with goods, and have need of nothing. And know not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. What condemnation! I counsel you to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that you may be rich, and white remnant. You know, God looks at the heart. True riches is not materialism. True riches in the sight of God is holiness, it's righteousness, it's purity of heart. That's what it means to be rich. And white remnant, it speaks of holiness that you may be clothed, and that the shame of your nakedness do not appear, and that you're not your eyes with the eyes out that you might see. What we have here is two groups of people. We have those that are lukewarm, those that are arrogant and proud, and say they have need of nothing. But all they have is materialism. We're talking about carnal Christianity, lukewarm Christianity, and then the Lord says that the shame of your nakedness do not appear. And I'll tell you what happens. When you have the anointing of the eye salve, when the Holy Spirit gives you revelation, then you can look at the body of Christ today and you can see the shame of the nakedness. It's shameful that we have so many ministries joining the Vatican, joining the Pope in Rome. And men like Kenneth Copeland will give an account to God for what he's done saying that the protest is over. Well, I'm sorry, but the Protestant Reformation, it never ended. Neither did the Counter-Reformation. That's why these Jesuit priests come into the body of Christ. And you know, men like Rick Joyner, he is a Vatican Knight of Malta. He's been positioned by the Society of Jesus, by the Jesuits. And ultimately, all of these men they will praise the Pope of Rome like John Arnott. And there's so many of them online. It's unbelievable. The fallen away has taken place. They're in bed with the great whore. And God wants us to see. God wants us to have the anointing of the eye salve that we may see. God wants us to have the sermon today. God wants to anoint our eyes so that we can see in the realm of the Spirit and we can look at the body of Christ and know that it's the mystery of iniquity. Many of these men are not saved men. If they were saved men, they would have the anointing of the eye salve. But they're walking naked. They're walking blind. They're wretched. They're not men of God. They're wolves in sheep's clothing. Let me say right now, any ministry that joins with the Vatican and does not protest against the papacy because it's not biblical Christianity any ministry that does that they're not anointed by God period they're not anointed by God because they would know revelation they would have the spirit of wisdom and revelation they would know the truth they would know the truth so you have this distinction you have those that are lukewarm and carnal and those that have the anointing of the eye salve they can see the shame of the nakedness but this church had no revelation of how wretched they were. And the body of Christ is like that today. Many ministries are joining the Vatican. And they don't know that they're wretched in the sight of God. They're miserable in the sight of God. They're poor and naked in the sight of God. God wants holiness. And when we have a desire for holiness, the Holy Spirit will anoint our eyes. Listen to what the Lord says next. As many as I love I rebuke. That's right. These men need a rebuke. 
Men like Kenneth Copeland, they need to be rebuked in the name of Jesus Christ. And we need to rebuke them before all. We need to go online and rebuke this apostasy. The Vatican is bringing all of the Pentecostal and charismatic ministries under its power. And therefore these ministries need to be rebuked sharply and strongly in the name of Jesus Christ. As many as I love, I rebuke. And we do that because we love them. We don't want them to be lost. We don't want them to be separated from God and have their name blotted out the book of life. That's why we rebuke them. We also rebuke these ministries to protect the body of Christ. And chasten. Be zealous therefore and repent. That's the word of the Lord for his church right now that are joining Rome. Repent. I don't know if you've heard of Rick Joyner. But he's a Vatican Knight of Malta. He's a wolf. He's a Jesuit wolf. In sheep's clothing. That's what he is. But there's many, many others out there. Who are ecumenical. Like the Kansas City Prophets or God TV. Or Trinity Broadcast Network. None of them preach against Catholicism. Or the Church of Rome. Not one. Not one. They're in bed with the great whore. The fear of man bringeth a snare. They're too afraid. They're too afraid to lift up their voice and be men and women of God in this hour. Verse 20, listen to what the Lord says next. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. That means everything. To have intimacy with the Lord Jesus, to have intimacy with him. It means everything. I stand at the door and knock. Now this was an entire church. And the Lord says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He was knocking on the door of this church. And they were increased with goods. They had their eyes on materialism. On prosperity. Not realising that what God demanded was discernment. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. There is a message of repentance that needs to come forth from us that know the Lord. We need to preach repentance, but we must also expose the false ministries so that those in the body of Christ can be protected. We have a responsibility to do that. We really do. Praise the Lord. You'd be surprised just how many ecumenical ministries or on the Christian satellite networks. There's so many of them. Behold I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hear my voice. They're not hearing the voice of the Lord. They're not hearing his voice. Let me just say right now. A man like Kenneth Copeland. Who's recently joined the Vatican. And is in bed fornicating with the great whore. That man has never been a saved man. He's a wolf. In sheep's clothing. He does not hear the voice of the Lord. If he knew the voice of the Lord, he would never, ever have joined the Church of Rome. Because he would know that it's counterfeit Christianity. He would not pray for Pope Francis. And he would not praise the Pope of Rome. But here we have these false prophets rising, deceiving many, just as the Lord says in Matthew 24. I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him. And sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I also overcame, and have sat down with my father in his throne. Thank God for his salvation, you know. We're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. One day we're going to sit on the very throne of God. And we're going to rule and reign with Jesus Christ. Because we're sons and daughters of God. What a wonderful God we have and what a wonderful saviour we have, what a wonderful Holy Ghost we have, what a wonderful salvation we have that one day we will rule with the Lord Jesus Christ, not only are we saved and forgiven but we're called to sit on his throne and reign with him praise the Lord praise his holy name but this message is really just my revelation on what's currently taking place in the body of Christ and let me say it's happening by design this is not happening by accident. These men are trained by the Jesuits. They're positioned by the Jesuits. And they ultimately bring all of the body of Christ 
a classic example I can give you is Billy Graham. Billy Graham was promoted in the media and he has many Jesuit doctorate degrees and you know in his crusades he would send the Catholics back to the Catholic Church, the Jews back to the synagogue. There was no salvation in those crusades. There was no salvation whatsoever. And Billy Graham will give an account. But one thing he said towards the end of his life, he says the Pope is a great evangelist. The Pope is an evangelist. They preach that Mary is a co-mediatrix with Jesus Christ. That she's a mediator. They bow before graven images and idols made with man's hands. They believe in purgatory, which is not biblical. And most of all, they do not have the gospel of Jesus Christ. They have another Jesus. It's not the Jesus the apostles preached. And there's Billy Graham saying he's an evangelist. But you see, that's what they do. And men like Copland, after they receive millions of followers, what they do is they then praise the Pope of Rome. And that brings all of the followers into the Vatican structure. This is what happens. This is happening by Jesuit design, of course. Okay, I think I'll end this video now. Uh, thank you for watching the video. Uh, God bless you and just give your life to Jesus Christ completely. That's all I can say as a close. Just give the Lord your life completely. Don't hold back. Let God put his anointing upon your life. Let him give you discernment. And you know, many churches and many ministries, you'll have to come out with them. Come out with all my people. Just come out of her. You know, come out. And it hasn't ended. It's only beginning. There's going to be more ministries that are going to fall from the grace of God and praise the Pope of Rome.